Hi guys, it is a lovely day here in the end times in paradise in East Bumblefuck, New Mexico. We have made it till to Sunday morning, February 19th, 2017. <clears throat> and I just finished my day late clueless moron roundup rant. And I don't know if uh, this latest video by Paul Beckwith should have been mentioned in the clueless moron roundup rant or not i just uh, I, i'm just enjoying the developing feud between my two humpty dumpty tribe heroes climatologist paul beckwith and uh <clears throat> i guess he's a biologist uh guy mcpherson and so anyway anyone down this rabbit hole who is into the to both the subjects of near-term human extinction and the climate crisis <clears throat> will probably be getting some humor out of this if I can get this frog out of my throat. <clears throat> so anyway, last night, I guess February 18th, <clears throat> Paul... God damn it, I don't know if I'm going to get my throat cleared or not. <clears throat> Paul uh, came out with his latest 15-minute video his, his, where he's starting to pull the gloves off against uh, Guy McPherson, who he never mentions by name, by the way. But, but Guy McPherson and anybody swallowing... Guy McPherson's uh, doomsday predictions about near-term human extinction. I'm going to put the link to this 15-minute video on here. I highly encourage you to shut me up and just go play the damn video yourself and, and, and make your own uh, conclusions about it. But I'm just going to play you a bunch of clips. If you want to sit around and listen to my comments about it, you're welcome to. But anyway, if you don't want to go watch it yourself, let's just hear, let's just hear some slices of this hilarious uh, rant by Paul talking about Guy McPherson and near-term extinction doomsday prophets. So the idea of near-term human extinction is, you know, we have 7.5 billion people on the planet right now. We grow about 240,000 per day. So the idea of all of these people just dying, you know, in the space of, say, 18 months or two years or even, you know, five years, ten years, that idea is extremely difficult to understand. You know, surely we would be see seeing signs of this occurring right away. People would be dropping like flies and numbers. There you go. Uh, surely we would be seeing some signs of, uh, of impending human extinction. Huh. I'm not seeing any signs. You know, not at all, Paul. But of course, uh, I say bring out the fly swatter. But uh, okay, let's, I'm just going to move ahead. As I say, you, you, you can, you, you can uh, do this yourself. Let's jump ahead to four minutes into the video. Or a cliff or a chasm of thinking in order to think that the entire 7.5 billion people on Earth, let alone the animals and plants, are all going to go extinct in a very short period of time. Okay. I guess that, that Paul Beckwith is completely unaware, unaware of the sixth mass extinction. I, I'm going, I'm not talking about humans now. As, as he say, not only does he not see any signs of, uh, of humans going extinct any, you know, any time in the near future, he sees no signs of animals going extinct in the near future. Uh, obviously, uh, Paul completely unaware of the sixth mass extinction and I guess he's unaware that we have now entered the Anthropocene, the age of humans, which is, of course, the reason why we are in the sixth mass extinction. All right, as I say, guys, uh, I'm just picking out some clips 
Let's go to a minute. Let's go into about minute five and a half. Well, where are you? There's a lot of positives on the climate front. <laughs> there you go. That, that, that's one of, one of my favorite quotes in this. Uh, Paul Beckwith, you know, he's the guy, uh, when he's at home, he has this little uh, red siren flashing in his room. Uh, if, if there is, is one doom and gloomer in, in the climate community, it, it, it is Paul Beckwith. But apparently, Paul has taken a serious dose of hopium. Uh, recently, I think it's ever since this article, this bullshit article came out uh, a while, a few days ago about the methane bomb, the myth of the methane bomb, uh, that Paul all of a sudden has just taken this shot of hopium and, and joined the uh, group of... Uh, uh, not I've, I've talked about this group before, the Apocaloptimist. The Apocaloptimist, and, and this band right here is my new favorite Apocaloptimist, and I'm an Apocaloptimist is not a clueless fucking moron. An Apocaloptimist understands, understands we are so fucked. Uh... uh Paul Beckwith knows goddamn well how fucked we are, but uh, he thinks it's all just going to turn out fine anyway. We just, you know, we throw up a few solar panels and some windmills. We start blowing some chemtrails uh, up in the stratosphere. Uh, we, we make a big bubble machine uh, in, the, in the ocean. And and we can we can fix this, guys. Uh... The public is really starting to wake up and recognize the problem. <laughs> oh yeah. <sighs> Lots of politicians aren't. You know, there's setbacks with the Trump administration, yes, for yes. example. But hey, there's a lot more scientists that are starting to speak out about the threats. There's lots of... There you go. Uh, let, let's hope so. Okay. Let's see. Moving ahead. Let's go to about halfway through the thing. Uh, okay. We're about halfway through at this point. Cool. Unnamed. You know, are starting Guy to really make a lot of noise. Guy McPherson is who he's talking about. The idea that we're all going <laughs> extinct in extremely short periods of time. So they're trying to fortune tell, and there's no evidence to support that. Guy McPherson has no evidence, no evidence to support his, his contention. Now, I'm, I'm at the end of this video after, uh, after Paul uh, comes on here. I'm going to give my own uh, emeritus Christmas tree salesperson comments on Guy McPherson's forecast, but to, for, for Paul Beckwith to sit there and claim that Guy McPherson offering no evidence to support his claim, come on, uh, Paul, pull your head out of your ass. There's no really strong evidence, and there's no mechanism of uh, what to do. Like, there's no, uh, there, there's no thought-out mechanism. Like there's talk, oh, all the reactors are going to break down. Well, sorry, things don't all break down simultaneous. <laughs> things don't all break down simultaneously. Uh, well, uh, I, I guess that, that is a point that, that we could certainly open to debate. Uh, things don't break down simultaneously okay moving along we're getting up to my favorite quote of the video coming in at eight minutes and 12 seconds you know it happens in cascading effects and if we see signs of that then thinking will have to change on how severe the problem is but we don't have these things happening now so you know fortune telling very distorted thinking okay we don't have these things happening now I see no signs of the end times. Okay, we're coming up to my favorite quote of the uh, 
uh, of Paul's rant. Take it away, Paul, and, 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 and tell us the way it is in one quote. You know, my, I mean, my crystal ball is saying we don't have a problem. You know. <laughs> Paul Beckwith, my crystal ball is saying we don't have a problem. Nee, dee, dee, dee. You go, Paul. Uh, okay, let's move up to minute 10. This is a 15-minute video. All right, so we're two-thirds of the way through the video. What is, where has Paul gotten in by 10 minutes? Be dead in two years? That's the absurdity. That's like, they get real people here. Okay. Another thing is should statements. You know, should he? Should he? Should he, okay. Um, so what should we do? You know, the NTHE crowd is saying, you know, just enjoy your life. Can't do a thing. You know, roll over. Stuff's all preset. You know, there's no... Humans have no impact on their future destiny. We've pretty much had it. Right? You know, love yourself, all this stuff. Well, sorry, I don't think... Uh, I don't think I'm about to get into that category. No, we, we will never get into uh, love yourself category. Uh, there, there's no way uh, we're going there. I just don't buy it. <laughs> I think it's very harmful thinking. Yes, it is. Fortunately, most of the planet doesn't have that, and people will step up and take strong action. You know, it's People will step up and take strong action. Action. I, I'm not even going to bother getting out my bullshit detector button. Humans always do. Yes, humans Label. always do. Yes, uh, humans always get up and take strong action to save themselves and the planet. There is certainly 200,000 years of historical evidence to back up that claim, Paul, about how humans always step up and take strong action in the face of mounting uh catastrophe is another distortion you know calling people jerks saying hey this is <laughs> okay let's get towards two two more clips here paul towards the end we're pretty much at uh going on to 13 minutes wrap you know, it up I really call bs on near-term human extinction there you go he just calls bs on it you know, two years, three years. I mean, that was the final straw for me. You know, when it was 10 years or two decades out or three decades out, well, who knows? You know, things are going really bad. I mean, I've been talking about how bad the climate... There you go. 10 years, 15 years? Well, who knows? You know, I guess 10 years or 15 years is not near term. It's that two years. So when does... At the very close, before the, uh, the, the video just runs out abruptly, uh, I guess uh, this is his most serious charge against Guy, although he never names Guy. I was supposed to be arranged with, uh, you know, one of the main NTHE guys, but he wanted a thousand bucks an hour to talk about this sort of thing with engineers. I mean, it's ridiculous. <laughs> There we go. Uh, no, no, no comment on that particular one about Guy McPherson charging $1,000 an hour to uh, say how we're all doomed. Anyway, guys, okay, just, uh, just for, for anybody who really gives a shit about what my opinions are on this, uh, now, I, I, I want to make it clear from, as I always do, that I, Hambone Littletail, in no way, shape, or form on any level are going to join where it's somewhat he calls the nutters. Maybe it's, uh, maybe it's, anyway, that, that's his, his opinion of anybody 
uh, thinking certainly in the next year and a half to two years as a nutter. I have never joined the, uh, never gotten on the Guy McPherson uh, bandwagon that humans are going to be extinct in the next 10 to 15 years. Now there are thousands and thousands and thousands of other of our earthlings, fellow earthlings we share the planet with, who are goddamn well going to be extinct. Uh, by the end of this video, uh, not to mention two years, 10 years, 15 years, as the sixth mass extinction here in the age of the Anthropocene that Paul Beckwith is not aware of, uh, that, that's going to happen. But uh, I have never gotten on the, uh, uh, on the uh, Guy McPherson bandwagon, although as I've said more and more recently, as more and more information comes in, his, his predictions at least for 15 years out are making more and more sense. Uh, I don't laugh him off as much as I used to, and, and Guy does remain one of my Humpty Dumpty tribe heroes, uh, despite his sloppy-ass reporting. Uh, so anyway, I, you know, I, I would never, uh, as Paul Beckwith says, uh, never are, am I going to step in the trap of uh, talking about when humans are going to go extinct, when global industrial civilization is going to collapse, uh, which is obviously going to have to happen before humans go extinct. And, uh, you know, I'm cheering on the collapse of global industrial civilization. I have always said since the beginning of Humpty Dumpty Tribe six years ago, and I think that James Lovelock, I think that James Lovelock is still making the claim uh, that he was when I started this channel six years ago that his belief is is that Mother Nature, namely through global warming and climate change that, that uh, Paul Beckwith is always talking about, will take the population of this planet down to one billion or less by the year 2100. I have no problem with joining James Lovelock that the population of this planet will be less than 1 billion people by the year 2100 as it needs to be as Mother Nature turns up the thermostat, brings out her broom, trying to kill this invading virus with a global fever. That is exactly what she's doing, is trying to defend herself ag against this invading virus and cancer cell. Uh, now, I don't necessarily agree with James Lovelock that uh, we're going to all be living in a bunch of of plastic bubbles by the year 2100 to save our the one billion of us left on the planet are going to be living in giant plastic bubbles but who knows and i certainly so i'm about 95 percent on board with uh with James Lovelock, but, but I'm sure as hell 100% on board with, uh, with Stephen Hawking, who claims that we have 1,000 years max before something or another, if, if nuclear war doesn't get us, climate change will, that at the absolute outside the human race has 1,000 years, and, and I have no problem with that, and, and that is my definition of the end times. These people, you know, always laughing at me, talking that we're in the end times. Once again, as long as I'm on this subject, to, to wrap up this rant, uh, you know, modern humans, if we accept just the, the general definition of modern humans showing up about 200,000 years ago, Okay, if we do have 1,000 years left, which I don't think we do, but assuming we do have 1,000 years, that would mean, uh, one, that we are 199 two hundredths of our way to the end of ourselves as a species. We're 99.5% of the way at most, or at least, uh, to 
uh, you know, to being extinct. I consider 99.5% of, of the way to the end to be in the end times. You know, as I say, if you're if you're taking a 200 mile trip with your bratty little kids that you never should have had, and you've gone 199 and a half miles to, to, on a 200 mile trip, and in Grandma's house is one half mile ahead of you, and your bratty little kid says, "Are we there yet?" You can say, "We're almost there." Whether it's two years, 10 years, 15 years, 100 years, 500 years, or 1,000 years, we are almost there. We are in the end times. Make your own decision as my friend. And, and, and what really solved this whole riddle for me, I was not aware that, that, uh, that uh, Paul Beckwith has three children and Guy McPherson, of course, has zero children. Uh, and that is the difference between Paul Beckwith being an apocaloptimist and Guy McPherson being a doomsday prophet. That once you breed, once you make the serious biggest blunder in your entire life, especially if you make it three times over, you have to be an apocaloptimist. You know, Paul Beckwith and and uh, and Chris Hedges with his four children. You know, they have no choice. They know goddamn well that we're fucked, and and that their children are a hell of a lot more fucked than they are. Uh, good God, can you imagine what Paul Beckwith's children are going to see in their lifetimes? But anyway, we've heard this rant before. So I'm going to wrap up this rant and uh, head out back and try to get a damn floodlight put up in the backyard. Go and listen to this whole video and uh, be sure you leave some comments. You'll see the comments I left. Whether, uh, whether Paul Beckwith wants to admit it or not. Bye, guys.